So, everyone, welcome to the first episode, whoa, of uh, the Spokes podcast at the Urban Cycling Institute. Today, here I have with me from Lithuania. So, yeah, I'm Anton Nikitin. I work for the city of Vilnius, Lithuania, um, and I am the sustainable urban mobility guy. And how is cycling in Lithuania? I imagine it's coming up to winter, so things are getting cold. Do you have any snow there? Oh yeah, we have a lot of snow in winter. Well, it depends actually. Last couple of winters are not that bad. But um, yeah, the cycling is getting better. Mm -hmm. We're building network. Uh, we've built some 50 kilometers of cycling infrastructure in the last four years. Yeah. Uh, and we are about to build another 70 kilometers in the next uh, couple of years so yeah it's getting better cool and uh, you're here with me on the cyclewalk project which is part of the european union funded interreg uh, stream yeah uh, and what have we been doing so far well the thing is that the project is about to end <laughs> uh -oh. uh, basically its first phase is uh, uh, is about to end by the end of this year, so and it's year 2019 for the record, right? Yeah. Um, so uh, the project is about cycling and walking and how do we improve our cities, uh, and uh, basically it's about learning about this. Um, what can we do? We had our first meeting in Amsterdam and had this uh, really great experience of how everything could be. Yeah. And and then we visited. Um, all other partners so we went to uh, we went to Austria we went to Italy and Slovenia we went to Sardinia we went to to Romania uh, guys came to Vilnius and, and we were learning from each other what do we do what good things we have what bad things we have and um, and yeah that's probably it cool and uh, you were here in Amsterdam well in the Netherlands but in Amsterdam a few years ago or months ago how did that compare in years, years i don't know <laughs> i'm how in love with the netherlands Delft, right you're in love with it i'm here. in love okay. I'm, I'm actually well the thing is that um yeah so first time we were here uh it was two years ago in april and then uh um, i happen to visit netherlands every uh now every half year even on your own money? No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no not yet. Right. Well, yeah, I, I, I visit warmer countries you know, on my own money, but no. Yes. But the thing is that well, I, I happen to, to visit uh, on different kind of occasions. Yeah. And I really love it. Uh, it's, um, well, you know, it's, um, I'm always lucky with the weather. So I don't know. Uh, wait, I, wait, wait. I, the weather is good here. Yes. You know, people in Spain who come in Spain and Italy. I know. This I know. is pure it, suffering for them. I right? know, but but well, uh, it. Uh, I'm so lucky. I don't know. People say that it rains a lot here and it, uh, there's winds and everything. Yeah. And I'm so lucky that it, it rained. I don't know. Uh, totally during my all four or five visits here it rained totally two hours maybe so um yeah so what are the odds right uh oh look ahead we're having a traffic jam here oh yeah okay yeah. The traffic. oh 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 Whoa. Whoa. Uh, yellow yeah. light that's okay. right uh oh wow, that's wow good work no no are you no okay? it's okay yeah. we wait we wait we wait <laughs> It's great. That, so yeah, what was the question? The, the question is, uh, how, what, how do you feel about the weather given that you're from a much colder yeah, place? Yeah, so the weather is great. For me, I don't know. Oh, we can go. Uh, so the weather is great. But uh, the thing I enjoy most is this experience, of course, of the cycling. Uh, and um, the, before visiting uh, Amsterdam, I just, you know, you kind of, well, I, I love cycling from as, as, as far as I remember myself. But until you visit Amsterdam, until you sit on the bike, uh -huh. and until you just really try the, what a nicely designed network looks like, and until you really see the rush hour and all the people going everywhere, you're like, oh, this is how it all can be. So, you know, then you're so in love with, with the Netherlands and, and, and everything what happens here and you want to learn more. So yeah. that's what I basically do every time I visit. I take a bike, I rent a bike, I, I just ride around 
I take pictures of all the strangest things I can take. It's a curb, it's a intersection, it's a marking, it's a, the asphalt, it's the piles or whatever. So, and, and, then, and then I bring those pictures back to Lithuania and, uh, well, try to do um, not something similar, but to adapt it to our local conditions. Hey, so Anton, like, how'd you get started in this whole cycling planning business and how'd you get involved in this EU project? Well, it happened uh, to be that, that I'm working as, 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 as the cycling and not only cycling person. Mm -hmm. But I started um, the, my career in transportation as a cycling uh, project coordinator, like yeah. cycling officer or you name it. Then it really quickly expanded to cycling and pedestrian uh, uh, issues or, 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 or topics. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it again quickly expanded as, as we had our SUMP uh, approved. Uh, it really quickly expanded to all the SUMP management because, uh, well, I think you can't have uh, you can't have good cycling network or pedestrian um, uh, comfort. Yeah. Without you know this holistic approach or you name it, how you name it, you know you have to look at all the infrastructure and. Uh, and try to make safer streets you have to make uh, enough space and comfort for everybody so that's that's i guess the uh uh how it should be cool we're going through through a tunnel here oh it's amazing oh well, let's uh let's just enjoy this for a bit so i think it's cool here because they, they and try you can to see build I, the i'm tunnels. making pictures of yeah of, yeah of, at the same time <laughs> uh that's illegal by the way so uh, i'm turning sorry, this yeah. over to the police and I, 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 I hope uh <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna get a fine so they they shape the tunnels uh at an outward angle so it makes it feel more spacious and I was oh, involved yeah. in this simulator project where they actually tested in virtual reality the different light spacing. So here you would have a bridge and then you would have some open air and then you yeah. have another bridge. And they were trying to figure out like exactly how much open space do you need for it not to feel too much like a tunnel. Oh wow. So they actually deliberately space out the bridges so there's light. And I'm curious, what is the incline? Because it's... Uh... Uh, this should be in the crow manual. This is like very mild, right? What do you think? Uh, well, it, it, it doesn't look mild, but it's easy to cycle, uh -huh. so that's that's the... I don't know, everything is so easy here. <laughs> <laughs> it's too easy. Uh, it's too easy, yeah, yeah. So, uh, Give us some uh, some adrenaline. Yeah. That, uh, they're legally loud, but they clearly don't have speed limiters. They're yeah. supposed to go maximum 45, but... Or is it 25? No, it's... It 25. should be 40 on the bike path. Wow, 40? 40 yeah. is a lot. Yeah, it is. So at the end of this uh, EU project, what are some of the things that uh, you're seeking to bring to your city? Uh, I think I already brought some. So oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so crow is one of the things. Uh -huh. um, another, actually, it's not about this project, but uh, but basically inspired by this project is uh, the sustainable safety, which is mm -hmm. uh, well, kind of my dream that we. Not completely, but uh, but really, you know, um, have it implemented in our city. Uh, but basically, I guess this project and and, and these experiences uh, they do change the mindset of of uh, of me. Yeah. How it can be made, what can be done, and and that's uh, you know a, a lot of sm small and and big things uh, that are. Uh, that are important so it, it might be infrastructure but as well you know uh not less important is the um uh, the um, soft measures so all, all the all these the things educational and then so on so uh i think that's what i'm learning and then and then you know design wise or or um or how do we change perception? I'm also bringing it uh, to Vilnius from, from this project, yeah. Uh, I'm looking, you mentioned Pro, that's that's interesting. I'm looking into doing a YouTube series on the book. Oh, cool. And I think that, like, what do you think about that value added for practitioners? Uh, uh, well, it, it would be great, actually. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, reading all Crow, yeah. Uh, it, it gives you a, a lot of a lot of um, um, good thoughts about how the infrastructure could be planned. 
But the thing is, and the limitation of crow, and, and it's not only because of crow, that uh, you can tell people, you know, well, I need a 3.5 meters bike path or 4 meters bike path because, well, we have our plans and we, need, we will have this capacity and so on. That's one of the examples. Uh, but then the politicians or decision makers still say, well, that's wide, that's very wide. Uh -huh. You know, what do, do we need to build it? And, um, and I think uh, along Crow, uh, we have to think about changing perception of, of other people. So, because, you know, in the Netherlands, I, 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 I guess there is more or less understanding that, okay, we need to follow that and then and, and we and that's the, the thing to be done. But in other countries, it's uh, a bit different. So just because there's a manual doesn't mean people yeah. actually follow it. Yeah, yeah and, and if they follow... Oh. Clearly oh, a school... Kids. Oh, it's school hour. Wow. Like a, so this and is this interesting. Kid, there's, this kid. Oh, this kid on a bike. Oh. Um, look at all the parents who are picking up their kids. I don't know if these cars are from the residents, but these bikes on the left and that uh, school bus bike thing yeah. in the orange. Cool. That's cool. That's how. Uh, that's how. That's your version of the school bus. <laughs> so, 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 how do you think uh, cycling here in Delft, which is a smaller Dutch city, uh, compared to cycling in the much busier Amsterdam? Uh, Amsterdam is busier. So. <laughs> no, actually, it, it, it's not that different. Um, I think uh, during the rush hour, uh, it's also quite busy here. Yeah. Because we were, uh, this morning, we were walking uh, from our hotel and it was really, really busy. A lot of cyclists. So, um, and I particularly enjoy that, um, I know how to put it and how, how to describe it, but uh, the way <clears throat> Uh, people move on the cycles. It's that eye contact and, and you know, and just uh, speeding up and slowing down a little bit so that it's kind of a ballet uh -huh. dance with the bicycles. So yeah, that's that's probably the, you know, it really is, it is really fascinating. Do you, uh, do you watch their, their feet? Because we're on coaster bricks. Actually, I want to ask, what do you feel, how do you feel about coaster bricks? Uh, what's the coaster brakes? It's a back pedal brakes because oh, yeah. we got nothing on our hands. So. Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> it's a funny thing that I have a uh, similar bike at home. Well, I, I have the front yeah. brake, the hand front brake, yeah. uh, but I quite rarely use it. So I'm fine, but for those who never used it, uh, it's quite, uh, quite challenging, I guess. Yeah. So I'm fine, but um, yeah. Have you uh, paid attention to people's uh, feet when, at, when you're negotiating? If they have a coaster brake, I find it much easier uh, to see what their intentions are. Oh, Cause like no. If you, yeah, because everyone has a coaster brake. So if you watch yeah. their feet and they go pedal backwards, yeah, yeah. Then, then you know uh, they're slowing down. Oh, wow. Or if they that... like, prepare to pedal backwards. <gasps> that's, that's nice. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, next level Dutch cycling. Next Look level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> no, I'm just, you know, enjoying the surroundings <laughs> and enjoying the quiet. Yeah. Uh, actually, the quietness. Uh, oh, there's good. more. I guess they get priority here. So these speed bumps here, they're they're mostly to slow down the scooters that uh. are going. That the really fast ones that came up from behind yeah. us a while ago. Yeah, so they put these wave things yeah, yeah. as a kind of a fun way to let the scooters reduce their speed a bit. They're not very comfortable for cyclists too. I actually noticed, well, the differences, you know, yeah. ab ab about all, all the infrastructure. So the, one of the differences is the speed bumps for cars in, the, in these uh, uh, residential streets. So with them... Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, sweet. Um, so with them, uh, they are so bike friendly, those speed bumps for mm. cars, and they're, they don't seem very friendly for cars, you know, so that they keep up the 30 speed, yeah. for instance. So that, that really fascinates me because our standard speed bump is not friendly for, for bicycle because you have this hit 
and then you jump a little bit if you're you know going uh, on the bike so there is uh, it's, it's not that that's very friendly it's more of a gentle wave pattern yeah. right yeah. I, I think it's uh, and, and actually the the speed bump uh, that they build here the 30 ones they're they're high enough that you, yeah. if you drive really fast yeah your suspension won't absorb all of it yeah. whereas if you put those tiny but but really uh, the ones that are small but they have a very high impact yeah and you have a really big car and sometimes you can go really quickly uh -huh. and just drive through them and then your suspension just takes up all of the, the yeah bump. like these ones it's you have to really slow down yeah yeah and they're so good for, for cycling mm -hmm. as well and another thing actually probably well the difference between amsterdam and delft the cycling so in amsterdam people cycle closer to to each other Ah, I think because of the is space. This too close? Uh, no, it's not oh, close. We, it's we're fine. pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty this good. Is good. This is good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but basically because I, I guess, uh, there, well, as as uh, as I said, I didn't um, I cycle here during the rush hour, the real rush hour where everybody goes to school or work or back home. Uh, but uh, it doesn't seem that you know people are cycling very close here. Mm -hmm. So, because of the space, probably. Oh, those kids are close. Okay. Yeah, this is a nice <laughs> four meter wide bike path here. Yeah. So no, no challenge for space. Yeah. And uh, have you got any other Dutch cities that, that you want to visit? Um, at some point? Actually, I, I visited um, The Hague uh -huh. and uh, Utrecht. Yeah. Um, I think I, I would like to go back to Utrecht one more time. I would like to go to, to Rotterdam, which seems for me that is the city that could be quite perfect to learn from. Their uh, car center. Yeah. yeah. So as you know, as a lot of European cities. So uh, and they're doing a lot, as far as I know, and as far as I follow. So um, yeah. So I'd like to visit it, just to see what could be made when you have wide streets and uh and stuff cool and uh with that and with this traffic jam we have up here we'll uh we'll call that the end of our podcast yeah yeah all right that was so quick. Uh, thank you anton for joining us thank you and we're gonna have uh, a blast here in delft in the next couple of days so cool take care guys we'll see you next time